Good morning. Um, can we play that last video again? The one with the running man? Um, Mr. Oduwo's, Oduwo's um, video. So he's running in boots, he's running in flippers, slippers, normal shoes, size 20 shoes, flip flops, clown shoes, high heels. I don't even know what that is, but he's running in a Kleenex, tissue paper boxes, rubber chicken. This video is very prophetic. Did you notice what it's tried to tell you? It's tried to tell you something. If you notice, the running was consistent. Kleenex, rubber chicken, rubber shoes, high heels. The strength, the momentum never wavered. What it's telling you is what you have. Run with it. Whether you started from the palace, or from the village, or from the slum, or you have iPhone, camera phone, Fuji, Canon, um, Techno, my uncle's phone, my brother's phone, I, or I borrowed somebody's phone. Rob, the running, he never broke stride. So what he's telling you is, what you have, run. Even God asked Moses, what is in your hand? Said I wrote, oh, hey, use it. So that is what that message is saying on a subliminal level. But if you notice, nobody said what, what it's about, really. They just, people are just like, ah, oh, guy, running, funny shoes. But he's sending a message in a very, very short form. And what we've been talking about, when we talk about um, TikTok, um, Facebook, YouTube, those are form, short form entertainment, uh, sorry, short form content, where you have such a little time to say so much. I just want to point that out so you, I differentiate it from screenwriting, because even though screenwriting has a short form of storytelling, but usually we have a longer space to expand that story. It's, you think is actually easier to write long story, but to be honest, it's, it's harder to write a short story. It's actually easier to write a longer story, but to write a short story in a short time and say something is very hard. So there's an other video that I'm going to bring on, uh, Black Hole, maybe some people have seen it before. So please, can we roll it? Okay. All right, it's coming. Wait.
So what is that Tef tried to tell you? Greed. And if you can tell, genre as per, with regards to what type of story is it, it's, uh, would you call it a comedy, a thriller, both, drama? If you notice the, the shadows in the beginning, usually that, you know, is thriller. It means something dark is happening, so it's going to happen, something mysterious. And then he printed that black hole that didn't came out of nowhere. And yes, he just told us in a short, in a short form, greed. Now, I don't know how many people were here yesterday. We mentioned conflict. Was there any conflict? When was it? In the beginning. You saw a man, he's depressed. He's just, mm, this job, job, just, just, just. And then opportunity came. <laughs> and he decided to change his life. And the thing that changed his life changed him because he locked up in that, which is very dangerous because a safe is an airless space. And this is in the office at night. So most likely people will come in the morning if it's weekend. So would he be alive? Will he survive? We don't know. All because of greed. You see, all that in that short story. And guess what? Did you hear one line of dialogue? Yet you, it was communicated to you. And that is powerful storytelling. I'm not saying that you don't need dialogue, but don't rely on dialogue. Sometimes they say action speaks louder than words. So that's the black hole. Um, let's go back to our slide. Yesterday, we just quickly run it. I updated it a bit, the art of storytelling. Can we start from the beginning, please? Okay, the art of storytelling. Next slide, please. Everyone has a story. We all agree with that. Your story world, where does your story take place? Where? Is it in America, New York, Nigeria? I said something, write what you know. But that's not always the case because I don't want you to restrict your dreams of writing. Write what you research. So if you decide I'm going to write about, I want to, you know, crack into the American market, okay, if that's your desire and your goal, then you have to really do your research. And the research goes beyond what you've seen other people do on TV shows because as uh, our Mr. KP said that that is not necessarily the truth about policemen. When he said that what we get, the, our view of policemen in America is what we see on TV. And he lives in America. He said that's not the reality. So you have to really do your research so that by the time you write it, we know that, yes, you know what an American policeman, how they talk, how they are thinking, their philosophy, everything from state to state, how they differ even down to what kind of uniform, is it accurate? So if you don't want to write what you know, write what you can research and deep research because it always shows in writing. When a writer has done their research, he always try to talk about a world that he knows nothing about. Because what happens is you end up replicating stereotypes, things we've seen a hundred times before, Meanwhile, there are layers to those things or those people or those characters of what you're writing. But because you didn't do your research, you couldn't bring a unique perspective out of it. Okay, next, please. Who is your story about? Every story has a character. You can have, it can be about a family, a group of people, a mother. But who is it about? There's usually one person, there's usually one person's story. Now, you can have a film or a series with multiple characters. That is uh, usually when it comes to TV shows or series, you have that. But more or less, when you are starting out as a writer, start with tracking the journey of one character. It's about one character. It is this character we end up caring about. It is this character's journey we end up following from beginning, middle to the end. So it's up to you to decide who that character is. Male, female, child, young, old, tradition, and everything. That's why I put this here. If you see, every picture tells a story. 
makes you curious. What's her story? What's this one's story? What's that one's story? What's this one's story? Etc. Next slide, please. Hero versus villain. Now, your main character is usually the hero of your story. We also call them the protagonist, as if we're going technical. The main character, the protagonist, the hero. And the journey of your hero is always the journey of the hero versus the villain. That means your hero basically wants something and what is standing in the way is a villain. And the push and pull between them causes the conflict. Okay, next slide, please. As I said, the hero, our guy, our protagonist, when we're following a story, we want to know the actor, the main, the lead. You know? Then the next, the villain, the enemy, antagonist, black ballet people's haters. <laughs> because in life, if you notice in life, is when you want something that haters come up. If you say that, ah, you're just going to fail this exam. In fact, you want to fail. Nobody is going, I mean, people even help you fail. But the minute you say you want to be a success at something, distractions, people, all sorts of people now start getting in on your business. Next slide. This is what I did not say yesterday, the goal. Every character has a goal. The goal is the character's want, the character's need, the character's desire, character's motivation, the character's dream, or the character's ambition. If your character does not have, even if the goal is, I just want to sleep throughout this weekend, that is a goal. Then the villain becomes anybody that knocks on their door, say, ah, brother, wake up, oh, or your phone is ringing, or somebody needs something. They become antagonists. They become the black belly people to your goal, <laughs> to stop you from achieving your goal. Next slide. Because you have a goal and somebody is trying to pour sand, sand inside, it creates conflict because you want this thing. And as we mentioned yesterday, as a reminder, can anybody remember the type of conflicts? By these images? Just say it. Okay, the first one, man versus... Okay, second one. The third one. Uh -huh. The fourth one. Number fifth. Man-man relationships and the sixth, man versus himself, clap for yourselves. And that's it. Next slide, please. Beginning, middle, end. This is where we come to story structure. In a short form video, just like the running man, it's very, I mean, you have such a short time to say something. So usually those are the best short time video. You quickly say it. You see a man, he's running, he's wearing shoes. What's he trying to tell us? He's pushing, the, even the act of running itself, you're pushing forward. You have a want, you have a goal. And then you're walking in all these type of shoes, yet you are doing it. Okay. So all that just encompasses everything I said before. But now when it comes to, now this is the big one. This is for screenwriters. Even though this is still the basics. Beginning, the middle, and the end. You cannot write a story without these three plots. And you must plan for them. Plan for when the beginning is. Plan for the middle. Plan for the end. Again, it's like life. Which we don't like to admit sometimes because we always want it to be the beginning and the middle. Nobody likes the end because the end is the wrap-up. The end is the time you rest. What happens in the beginning, what happens in the middle, affects what happens in the middle, what happens in the end. If your beginning of your story is not well set up, you're going to jam lock in the middle. And it happens when you're writing a story. When you get stuck, go back to the beginning. Maybe you did not set up your character properly. Maybe you did not set up the world properly. Maybe you did not set up the motivation or the goal Maybe his goal is flawed. In, when I say flawed, it means the goal is not strong. Because for you to have a goal and for an antagonist or an enemy or a villain and black ballet people 
to rise up. It means that this goal is a sweet goal. It's when you want something good. That's when the devil rises up. And the devil is the ultimate villain. So if you didn't have a good goal in the first place, why would he rise up? He'll just uh, uh, let you continue now. But the minute you're like, no, I have a goal, a good goal. That's when the enemy comes up. So in the beginning, your character has a goal. Usually goals are motivated or desires or wants or it's because you find that there's something lacking. Either something off balance. Why is my life like this now? I have to change. Why is this like this? I, ah, well, I want to travel. Oh, there's something I want to achieve. Or even if it's to pass exam. Or even if it's to sleep all Sunday. Okay, not Sunday, weekend. <laughs> just to relax. And just switch off from the world. That is a goal. And anything that comes against this is the antagonist. And the struggle, just like you wrestle, I mean, like Jacob wrestled with the angel. I'm not calling the angel the devil. Creates conflict because you want something and the villain is trying to push you back. And that push and pull is what is conflict. And if your story does not have conflict, I'm not saying that you can't tell a story like that, but it will be a weak story, which means eh, it's okay now. But stories in which people are like, ah, you mean they did that to you or more? You to rise up now. You to, you know, you to brace up. And then everybody in the audience is like, yes, we're with this guy. This guy must win. This guy must win. Uh -huh. When people are gingered along with your character, then you have a good story because you've engaged the audience. We care about this character. We're like, ah, if this or more don't get that job, hey, we go burn this place down. That is how you're feeling. Have you ever watched a movie that made you feel like that? That no, this guy must win. Hey, when you're doing that, you're engaging with your audience. People, you're taking people on a journey. People are rooting for your character. So that's the beginning. At the end of the beginning is usually when we also establish what this person wants and what he needs. Though sometimes your want and your need are different. In more layered storytelling, you find out that what the character wanted in the first place Along his journey of acquiring it, he realized it's not what he needed. For example, you decide, okay, I want to be, um, I want to make a lot of money. That's your want. Maybe your need is you need to be content with what you already have. Because in your pursuit for the money, you end up compromising. And in the journey, on the journey of getting this goal, because the goal is neither good or bad, it's a goal. You may discover halfway that, ah, I need to be more content because it's not worth it. And in the process of growing to discover this, you eventually find out that you're even richer when you were more content than when you felt you had lack. So that's it. They call that character development. Your character develops along the way. But then that differs from storyteller to storyteller, how they want to develop their character. Then the end resolution. Okay, he, anyway, let me don't, go back to the next uh, structure. Now this is called the seed, uh, is it seed field paradigm. It's an example of a story structure. There are different types. Um, there's free tag, there, there are so many, but usually what they give you is a formula still based on the beginning, middle, end. You have the inciting, these, these are actually technical words, but if you can photograph it and then go do your own research, because <laughs> for those who have started writing, maybe you're already familiar with these terms. But basically this act, act one, set up, you're setting up the story. You're setting up the characters, you're setting up the world, you're setting up the motivation, you're setting up everything. This is a place you set it up. It's not during the middle part that you now start bringing new characters, new worlds that were not originally part of the DNA of the story. You watch movies like that, sometimes our early Nollywood films, thank God they're getting better, in which halfway through the movie, it started like this, somehow it just, went on a different tangent. And you're like, what story are they telling now? All the characters they started with, 
They are not there anymore. There's a new batch of characters. Usually what happens is in such situations is maybe the producer fired the other characters, but he had needed to finish the movie. And he's just like, oh yeah, okay, let's just, let's just continue the thing. Now you're the main character. <laughs> and then we watch it and consume it and wonder what we have watched. Okay, so that is usually middle part where people, where you have lost the plot of the story is where you start bringing all those elements in. But the middle part should grow naturally from the first act. And then finally, the resolution. Just a step back to the middle act, which is called act two. It's called the confrontation. When you have your need, your goal, and you start taking steps to acquire that goal, the villain puts up obstacles in your path. And as the story progresses, one obstacle, you overcome the obstacle. The second one, you overcome it. The third one, you overcome it till you reach your goal and finally defeat the enemy. Now, usually, the obstacle gets higher when you're writing your story. It's not like, uh, is it to Toby An Amuson? Yes. If you notice, she just, the huddle is the same, is the same height. She just, boom, boom, boom which is like storytelling, but the obstacle needs to be higher. If I fought against one person to achieve in my path towards my goal, the next obstacle should be two people. The next obstacle should be three people and et cetera, and et cetera. So it keeps growing like that. That way, it's more engaging to see the the pathways you have to overcome to achieving your goal. Or else the story just becomes, okay. And the obstacle must be real obstacle. For a beggar, 10,000, acquiring 10,000 naira can be an obstacle. For a billionaire, that's not. So for a billionaire, you have to really raise the obstacle for him in achieving his goal. So it has to be believable. After that middle, which we also call the confrontation, because that is when the villain who is trying to stop you from achieving are you, you are going neck and neck. Until finally you reach the resolution, which is what we call the end part of the movie. Now, the end part of the movie, not necessarily a good ending or a bad ending. It depends on what ending you want it to be. Generally, people like happy endings because we have put... First, we've watched this film for two hours, 30 minutes. And then you tell me that upon all the struggle and everything, she did it. The actor dies just like that. Just like that. Just wasted our time. <laughs> Pastor said, actor must rise. Once upon a time, someone was telling me that when Titanic, anybody ever watched Titanic? When they watched it, somebody behind said, that's what the guy just died like. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> he, she was abusing. He just left her like that. Just left her that boat to be. The person felt so insulted that two hours, three hours. And <laughs> but some people will look at it and say, but you see, he gave the ultimate sacrifice. He sacrificed. His, his love was so strong. <laughs> so the Nigerian girls are big rubbish. <laughs> And I'm sure some guys are like, I beg now, two of us could land on that thing that they float. Nobody must die. And then you ask yourself, what would have made a more powerful ending? Him dying or both of them surviving? You th <laughs> I don't know the answer to that, but everybody will have in their mind what they think. Some will say, no, they should have lived happily ever after. You know, because love stories must, you know, love stories must always be happily ever after. Uh -huh. The funny thing is, um, in, in different countries, they have different sentiments. Americans, for example, very positive people. The hero must succeed. Ah, the hero is not dying, no what? No. European cinema, they are very, um, how do I say, very cynical. They're like, hmm, life. You walk, you walk, and then you die. That's, you, that's their philosophy. So, they, so when they watch American TV, they're like, huh, 
Everybody is so happy all the time. What this is not life. You know, this is not life of the struggle. You know, but it's a mindset. And if you notice in every area in this world, everybody has a mindset of how they like their films. For Titanic, I feel it ended the way it ended because the truth is it was a tragedy. This thing really happened. People really died. So we felt the grief because we knew one of them. You see, that was the, the um, how do you say, the magic they, 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 they did with that film. When that film was coming out, a little bit of backstory on Titanic, people said, we know the history. We know what happened. People went on this ship. The ship hit one ice block and the ship sank and people died. So what are you telling us? that we don't know about this story. But then the genius of this storyteller is that he created these two characters, Jack and Rose, that were never part of the original people in the script. He created them and he put them inside a ship and he made us know them and like them. Ah, Jack is such a nice boy. Oh, Rose, oh, she saw a yeah, she almost killed herself because she didn't want to enter this marriage. A yeah, poor girl. I wish, you know, their goal is to hope to be happy and be together. Ah, oh, wonderful. Give them a goal to live happily ever after. Then wickedness, now put them on that boat. That boat that is going to sink. So now we're like, Hey, Rose, Jack, who we make it, they will kill him. You see, now they have gotten us. Well, like anything Rose does, ah, Rose, don't do it like that. Oh, go that way, go this way, idiot, turn this way. This way. Ah, he, he, he left room for you. You still went back on the boat. Hey, yeah, yeah, this girl won't kill me. <laughs> you see, and these are imaginary characters, they don't exist. But see how they have caught your. Your chest. So they say, I'm sure many people after they watched it, <laughs> he died. <laughs> For those who are emotionally vulnerable, they'll be like, ah, I felt it. So they put them on that boat, and then that boat sank. As the boat was sinking, did we care about the other characters? Yeah, we feel sorry for them. But Rose, my, my sister Rose, and Jack, they're on that boat. Stop praying. Oh, they must leave. They, meanwhile, at the back of your mind, you know the story. Many people died. So you wonder, would they leave? Would they, they not die? So throughout three hours, that movie when it came out was three hours. In that time, who sits down in cinema to watch three hours? Even then, bef even, even before then, screenwriting says your movie, one hour, 15 minutes. Yeah, okay. Anything more is overkill. But because they cut our hearts, will these people survive or will they die? Because of that, we sat down for three hours watching. And it wasn't like we were falling asleep. Or we were like, eh -eh. we must see this to the end. So when you watch a two-hour, three-hour film, and you start, have you finished? Something's happened which means they have not caught your heart. You don't care whether they live or die. You just want to see how does this thing end. That means the storyteller has not done his or her work to make you care. You have to care about your characters. Once I don't care, I beg, let them just finish doing that thing and let's move on. So they died. See, yeah. Kai. And people left the cinema crying. And guess what? The next day they went there again to watch it. <laughs> Did they really die? <laughs> and, they, and, and to make things worse, wickedness, they brought their family along. Come see what happened to Jack and Rose. <laughs> and then those people went and called their own people. And that's how it was the first film ever to cross one billion, to make one billion in the box office. That was 1997, never been done before. In fact, usually when a film is that successful, people say it's juju, they, <laughs> it's juju they use. But no, yes, they did. Storytelling juju. You made us care. In fact, they will start selling t-shirts, Titanic. 
Every, ah, because now we know the characters. They are like, ah, Jack, my brother. Rose, my sister. Ah, me too. I bought the t-shirt. Remember what? <laughs> that time the t-shirt was selling. Bought it. Yes. Which did concern me at Titanic. The real Titanic sank in 1912 or 1950. That was it. But my parents were not even born. My, not even sure my grandparents were even born. <laughs> but they made us care. And everything. So, that's one thing that the art of storytelling, you have to know how to make us care. To make us care. When we, once we care about your characters, we follow your story. Next, I don't know, do we have anything less? This one I told you, write and show what you only need. You must be deliberate in what you write, in what you show, in what you tell. When people are writing scripts, they may be saying some things that doesn't seem to matter. But later down the line, you realize it was important for them to reveal this part of the story. So that is called showing and telling. But tell us what we need. Don't give us, don't build this house with extra blocks we don't need that just make the thing very dry. Sorry, I can't tell my time there. Huh? Am I... 15, oi, I think this might, it's got to be short. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes, 18, okay. Can I sh show a short one last short? Okay, can we go to the next, um, what's your story? I gave everybody that assignment to find what their story is. Whether it's a long, short f format, like a script, or a short one. Like the running man or the black hole. And, if, and the funny thing is, over there, they so like ideas that they can give awards for short films. So is the idea, is the content. All right. Can we play um, the, the one about the hair? Oh, you didn't? So there's a short, um, we're, sorry, technical. We're trying to, we're trying to get it. But before then, let me just say something about the greatest story ever told in the Bible. I started yesterday saying about how, in the Garden of Eden, man did not have conflict. Man did not really have a need or a want or an ambition because the ambition was what God God has given Adam a job already to do in the Garden of Eden. But it was when Sister Eve ate the fruit that suddenly our eyes opened and we knew between what was good and what was bad. And that is how conflict entered the world and continued to be in the world. Because think about it, everything we crave in life, what we see, what we eat, what we, where we live, how we dress, everything, want, need, ambition. What's really driving it? That conflict, it all started with when man fell. So basically, as I said last time, filmmake, I mean, um, what the sin, what sin did was create the screenwriting business <laughs> industry. And another thing they created is the fashion industry. Because before then, uh -uh, nobody cared whether, okay, it's, it's mini, it's long, it's magazine, and it's anything. The greatest story ever told, the Bible. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. Um, I don't know if there are any questions at this point before we go to our last film. Oh, is it ready? Is it ready? Can we play it? Download. 
Oh, it's downloading. Okay. Okay. They said they needed two minutes more. Oh. Okay, question. Um, good morning, everybody. You were talking about losing the plot of a story. Now, um, sometimes I find out that the plot doesn't always depend on the writer. The audience can also determine your plot. I'll give you an example. I love NCIS. When we started, there was a particular character, she was called Kate, who died because we later found out that she was going on to a different television series. And it was like, oh. But when they put Ziva to replace her, ooh, there was this explosion. First of all, it was about Ziva, Ziva. And then there was Tony, who was very cocky. Everybody loved him. Then it now ended up being about the chemistry between Ziva and Tony. Meanwhile, the boss is Gibbs. And it's meant to be about Gibbs. So what do you do? Do you build more, excuse me, around Tony and Ziva? Or Gibbs, who is not really pulling that kind of... Where after a while, Ziva and Tony actually leave and... Suddenly, you find out the ratings have gone down. They've lost their steam. Gibbs is still there, but the steam is out. Okay. What do you do? Do you follow the crowd? As you mean, Ziva and Tony were still there. Do you follow the, your audience that is almost telling you this is what we want? Or do you stick with your plot? Okay. Um, one question. Mama, one question before we... Um, one question. How many... How many seasons is NCIS? Uh, we've gone to 19 now. 19? Yes. Each season is a year. Yes. 19 years. How many episodes in a season? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah. 22, 18. That's a lot. That's a lot. What I've been talking about is basically one hour, 30 minutes, one hour, 40. That's a lot of hours. The rules are different when it comes to long format TV series. Even Tinsel, it's, it needs a lot of people with a lot of stories. And the whole idea is we never conclude their stories. We know what we're doing. As long as they have one problem, I'll solve it. Somebody else will have another problem, I'll solve it. Then we go back to them and have... So that, that's what happened. And usually with a show that long, actors will not stay. So they have to be practical. One would leave... Even uh, Grey's Anatomy, I think, uh, though I think they're still running strong, is about this character, but some characters leave, some characters come back. That one, you still, what you just keep evolving is story. It's like, okay, this set of characters, what's their story? What's their goal? What's going to stop them? Have they achieved it? Great. Let's pick up another character. Give him a goal. Uh, run the goal. Did he achieve it? No. Hey, yeah, but he learned a lesson. God bless his heart. Bring another one. And then just keep on on and on. So when it comes to long TV format, those things happen. They don't lose the plot. They just have to keep running plots. They just have to keep running a plot. And usually it's not one plot. It's maybe four, five, six different plots running at the same time. Some with more importance, some with lesser importance. So it's a totally different structure. So if we were doing the three-act structure for a show like NCIS. Can we have that um, three act? Okay. Anyway, let me just quickly conclude. We will have a middle, but we'll never have an end. I think that's just the way I'll say it. If we are doing a long TV series, we just know that the end, we don't know until the producers are like, nobody's watching this show anymore. I beg, just wrap it up. Just wrap it up. Or else the middle can go on for 40 years. Okay, so I just want us to Pay attention and watch this, uh, I think it's about five minutes, short animation.
took a little bit of work and a whole lot of love. Mwah. Are you ready to do this? All right, here we go. See, now wasn't that easy? See, now wasn't that easy? All it takes is some confidence and a willingness to get started. And even though I'm not there, I'll guide you through this. I want to thank my very special assistant, my daughter, Zuri, for helping me with today's vlog, like always. And remember, the road ahead might look rough, but you can make the journey with a little bit of work and a whole lot of love. Mwah. Are you ready to do this? All right.
right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you followed that story. How does it make you feel at the end? Can I just randomly just... Hopeful. Hopeful. Okay. Happy, sad, happy. Okay. Mixed feelings or we are like, what is it about? So the girl and the hair and the woman with no hair. Mm. Who would you say is the main character? The girl. Who had the problem? The girl. What was her goal? Her hair. What was the obstacle? The hair. And the father was trying to help her. You can, you can tell the obstacle was the hair. Did you see when the hair turned, was beating the guy up as if, I beg, you can't control me. You don't know me. <laughs> um, I think to us, we'll be like, okay, why, is, why, why would somebody write about hair? It's actually an American um, story. And it's because, because Americans uh, sometimes feel under pressure because they find themselves in a largely white society. So their hair, seen natural, is seen as very wrong. It should always be relaxed or something. It's seen as a problem. So basically, it's saying love your hair. Even the mother. Did you know in the beginning, weren't you wondering at some point, where's, where's the father doing hair? Where's the parent, you know? But then they later revealed the mother in the hospital and she had no hair because because she had cancer and chemotherapy and she gave her mother a picture to show that you might love your hair or even if you don't have it she gave the mother a picture so the mother saw it removed the shameful scarf to show her hair or lack of hair in all its wonderful glory and they went home and lived happily ever after so this is just a simple form of story but just to give an idea of how even with animation you co can communicate ideas, feelings, and just tell generally any story. Did you want the girl to succeed or not? Because the way she cried and they opened her eyes. <laughs> you know, who, who will hear a child cry and not want to help? Anyway, so just keep in mind your character. Who is your character? What do they want? What goal do they want to achieve? What is stopping them from achieving it? Do they achieve it or not? If you can get this, you have no problem with writing any story, even if it's a novel. So with that, thank you all. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kenny.